Hey there! We are here at New Mexico Astronomy Acres. We drove 10 hours to be here and we're alive and so excited because we are under beautiful, not right now, Bortle One skies. Yes, we drove 10 hours. Uh, we slept in Phoenix uh, on the way here and uh, that, was a, that was a, a very long trip with a dog in the back <coughs> and the Raza in the back as well. So not a good mix, but it worked out. We came here because we installed our Raza 8 under these beautiful skies. We met uh, Larry, the owner of this remote observatory behind us. Um, it's a rather new um, business. It's been, uh, about, I think, almost a, a year, year now. Yeah. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to build several of these buildings uh, in, in this the future. So big land here. Yes. So, you know, there's more to come, hopefully. So let's go inside, uh, meet the owner, Larry, ask him a few questions and see what the inside looks like, including our telescope. Let's come go. On. Larry contacted us a year or so before this video was filmed and said that we could install our telescope at his observatory. And you can get a spot under Bortle One Skies for just $500 per month, which is the most affordable one that we know so far. We could not bring our gear for a long time for a specific reason. We did not have an extra mount. Larry decided to let us use his 10 micron GM2000 mount and we were very excited to attach our RASA to it. He helped us make sure everything was okay and it was so cool to handle such a big high-end mount. Let me ask two or three quick questions to Larry to learn more about this observatory, and then we'll image something. So, Larry, can you tell us about the remote observatory? Sure, I'd be glad to. Uh, the idea of having a remote observatory had not really occurred to me until I had a concrete slab here and nothing to do with it. So. As time went on, uh, my wife and I talked and we said, let's build an observatory. We're in a Bortle One Sky area, and it seems like a perfect spot to put up an observatory and see if we can rent, uh, rent uh, peer sites to people that would like to bring their telescopes here and operate them remotely. Why not? Yeah, I love it. exactly. <laughs> Why not? So talking about the building, so, you know, what, what can people expect, you know, from the skies and maybe even future plans for expanding? Okay, yes, good question. Well, the business is going well so far. We have this building that is capable of holding six telescopes, and so far we've got uh, three sites occupied and the fourth site reserved. So I think very soon we're going to be looking at building another observatory. So we have plenty of uh, property here. Our skies are Bortle 1. Uh, we have a lot of clear nights a year. I won't say we have 200 or 300 because that varies so much. But the, uh, the skies are fantastic. Everybody that's come here and put their telescope in has just remarked many times, wow, we've never seen the Milky Way like this. We've never seen horizon to horizon 360 degrees. So it's, it's an ideal location. We're in between two mountain ranges that are quite a distance away so that we don't have any obstructions to uh, seeing the uh, horizon almost 360. And uh, as time goes on, I think we will probably add observatories as the uh, business comes to us. When we know that uh, we're full and need more, we'll build more. So I know we talked about having, you know, maybe some more buildings in the future. So how, why is it that you want to build smaller buildings instead of one large one? Well, as I have constructed the observatory and put it into operation, I realized that the, one of the major expenses and one of the major challenges are roofs. And large roofs are expensive to move. Small <laughs> roofs are much easier to control and a lot less costly to build and that would be the primary reason. Mm -hmm. So this is our rig. Uh, we have a dedicated spot in this corner here, which is really awesome. We went with the Raza 8 because this is Bolo One Sky, and this is our uh, one-shot color, so true color, uh, no filter uh, setup. And I think it's the best combo to have just a Bolo One Sky, so the best possible skies if you're gonna have a, a color camera. So this is the Raza 8. We have a guide scope here. We sometimes don't use a guide scope. Normally with this mount, you don't really need to guide, but it's nice to have anyway, just in case. We have a autofocuser here from Celestron on the back. 
we have the Eagle 5S as our mini PC. So we use the Eagle to control everything uh, remotely. So we can connect to this from anywhere we want and um, turn on the mount, turn on the, the camera, turn on the focuser and everything else. So we also have a dew shield. So I'm not really sure if we should add a dew heater ring. We have one just in case, but uh, for now the dew shield, I think will work out just fine because the camera in it produces its own uh, warmth kind of anyway. So with the dew shield, it should uh, protect it with most dew. So the mount here is a blessing because Larry is allowing us to use his mount uh, for now, which is the only reason we're able to actually have a setup here because we were missing a mount. So this is not just any mount. Also, it's one of the, the best mounts in the world. The 10 micron uh, GM 2000 HPS, which is fantastic. The good thing also is because we've used the 1000 in the past, we already have all these software drivers and everything else on our Eagle installed. So it was very simple to connect. So yes, if you're wondering if you can just connect the 1000 and the 2000 very easily, yeah, they both use the same drivers and everything. So it was a very flawless uh, connection last night. Uh, we have just two counterweights here, which I was surprised by the way, because I believe I used three with a 1000. And I think it's because the counterweight shaft here is heavier itself. And so this, as you can see, is parked sideways, which we talked about in the past. It's, I think, important because this way, if we uh, angle the telescope just horizontally like this, then no dust will collect, or at least much less than if we park it as a, you know, the default position. So um, this is why we park it like this. And lastly, we'll talk about two or three different things we uh, had to add to this rig to make it remote friendly. And the first thing will be a remote box, which we'll uh, install in a second here. Because the 10 micron uh, has a momentary switch for the on and off position, we have to add a, a box to control it remotely, uh, at least to turn it on and off remotely. Okay, so one thing you might not think about is how important it is to use a UPS box. So these boxes are provided by Larry here. So if you uh, decide to rent a pier, you'll have your own UPS box for free. And this, you just connect your power cables to it. And in case of a power outage, this UPS box uh, acts as a battery and will uh, keep your rig powered. And one more thing Larry uh, provides for free is a web power switch. Uh, we don't need this for our rig because we have the Eagle, which is just, it's enough uh, for us. But this is to allow you to um, remotely power on and off each of your uh, outlets. So very nice to include that and the UPS box. Every member uh, has access to camera feeds that are you know, live videos. So there are several cameras in here. Uh, one is over there, one's over here. Very close uh, to my rig. So we'll also have access to those cameras. So we have uh, a whole view of what's going on. The first night imaging was very exciting and fully clear. We finished taking care of some cable management and made sure everything was ready to go. It was very cold, so we hurried up and then went back inside of the office to connect to the rig and picked NGC 1333 as our very first target. First light. <laughs> yep, yeah, first yeah. light. Astronomy Acres. <laughs> from uh, New Mexico Astronomy Acres. Beautiful. It's going to be a nice image, a nice guiding with the 10 micron mount. All right. Let's go to bed now. <laughs> Hasta la. This was the first night, so of course one thing had to go wrong, but thankfully it was something minor. The Meridian flip wasn't set properly. Besides that, everything was perfect. In the morning, we took care of some last minute improvements before we left, like making sure there was an S loop that ensures that the cables never ever get stuck, which is crucial for remote imaging. We also, of course, fixed our Meridian flip issue, and I took a picture with this beautiful rig before we parted ways. Okay, so everything is now fully ready. 
uh, we were able to image a little bit last night, uh, but now all the cables are perfectly fine and uh, the remote box is on and everything should be good for the long term. So this is going to be um, you know, the rig for this site, which is very exciting. And uh, we cannot wait to show you our first light, which you probably will see in this video at the end. Or actually, now, here, this is our first light, <laughs> which I, I'm guessing is NGC1333. And uh, yeah, hopefully it turned out really good from these bottle one skies. So if you guys want to have some more information about Astronomy Acres, you can uh, go on the link below and you can see all the prices there, as well as uh, you know, plenty of information about the weather and the quality of the sky and everything else. Despite this long and tiring drive, we had a great time at Astronomy Acres and we are very happy to now have a second rig at the remote observatory. Both rigs are very different, so they're very useful in their own ways. One is a monochrome setup with a refractor telescope and the other is an OSC setup with a fast rasa. We love going deep with that fast rasa. And so here are a few pictures taken with the Astronomy Acres Rasa 8, ASI 2600MC and no filters. The Bortle 1 skies are so awesome and at f2 we can capture most faint gases without any filters which is so amazing. We also did a collab with the Deep Sky Collective again and that image recently got APOD which is super cool. If you would like to set up your telescope at Astronomy Acres, be sure to visit their website which is linked below. It costs $500 per month which, in the world of remote observatories, is very affordable. Once you join, you get access to a Discord chat which is updated each day to let you know if the roof will be open at night and where you can talk with other members. Larry, the owner, is super cool and very approachable, so feel free to email him if you're interested. We'll see you guys next time. Clear skies!